Hey, it's Ed. Welcome to another edition of Ed Talks. I have the CNIO from Moffitt with me, Mark Perkins Carrillo. Mark, welcome to Ed Talks. Hey, thanks for having me, Ed. Okay, so I have to ask, I Southern accent, a last name that makes me think of something Latin. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't look that Latin, right? So, no, I have a hyphenated last name. I took my husband and I both hyphenated our name, so it's exactly the same. So it's Perkins Carrillo, and I get told all the time that I say it wrong, but it's my last name, so I can say it however I want, I guess. No, I I love it. It's it's great, but it's just the dichotomy of the of the accent and then uh, the Latin last name. But now that you play it, it makes perfect sense. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So obviously you're the CNIO and you and I connected. We did a webinar together maybe a year ago and I was like, wow, this guy is amazing. Tell us a little bit about your career and how you got to where you are. So way too kind. Uh, yes, I am the CNIO and director of clinical informatics. So one assumes that if with the title CNIO, I only focus on nursing, but I have the privilege of focusing on the entire healthcare environment. So I, I work with physicians, I work with all the other disciplines, and I think it makes it a better situation because you're not working in a silo. I know what's going on in all the spaces so that we're not competing with resources. So with that, how did I get here? My career has been long and journey. I started out as a nursing assistant. I went, I was in school for being uh, what I like to refer to kindly as a low paid nurse or LPN. Went back to school, got my RN. I've done critical care, emergency room, all kinds of different types of work. And you know, one of those things back in the day when you were good with the computer, all of a sudden you were pulled into that world of CPOE. And um, it still brings back nightmares for that. Um, I love what I do because in, in the informatics role, you can take care of more patients with one change than you could ever do in your entire career, taking care of patients at bedside. And so I think that we're a very special group really impacts the amount of work and burden on our clinicians and on our patients. And I think that's re really the reason that I stay with this so much. Yeah, no, that that's great. And yeah, it's a similar story to my wife, who's also a nurse and DNP now. And, you know, she, she knew how to use a keyboard. So suddenly she got, you know, put into the world of CPOE and EMRs, things like that. <laughs> but in addition to being a nurse, the other thing that captivated me about you when we met and the things that I see you talk about is the success that you've had with informatics at Moffitt. So can you share like one or two examples of some cool things that you've done that have really moved the needle on experience and quality? So I would think one of the biggest things is just eliminating burden. I think that's the biggest thing that we have to do for our clinicians. There's more and more regulations coming every single day. Even when you think you know the regulations, they change. And so then you're having to move the needle on that. There's there's financial measures that you've got to comply with. There's just so much. And I think that we're really trying to move that needle on, on that burden that the clinician has to have. And both. So one of our big projects that we're doing right now is ambient listening and documentation for the providers. I think there's a big space out there. There's everybody and their brother is in the market to sell you a product that can do this. But cancer care is, is different than regular hospital care. And let me be very clear, I am not an oncology nurse. So my, my background is, is acute care. And so when I got to Moffitt, I thought, okay, you're not that special, right? You've heard it all your life at every organization you went to. Well, you don't understand we're special. Until I got here and I really started understanding the complexity of cancer care and how it differs with standard care. And so there is a big difference there. And so those products don't always work the same. Any off-the-shelf product and try to plug it into something that's very special and it just doesn't work. So we're piloting, actually partnering with a company to develop an oncology-specific ambient listening. In addition to that, we have some partnerships that we are looking at to develop a nursing because that's a space that has not been touched. And there's a couple of companies saying that they're doing some stuff out there, but it really is, is wide open. It's a wide open space. If people are looking for a place to go, that's what they should be focusing on. They should stop on this doctor. The train has already left that station. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of other places that could use this documentation. 
Yeah, that's an excellent point and and good counsel for our listeners because some of our listening audience are on the vendor side. So that that's a great hint for them. So Mark, you're obviously super accomplished as we've already established, but there's going to be some people listening that are maybe managers or directors. And I'm going to ask this question in two different ways, but similar, but similar. And, and that is if I'm a nurse and I've dabbled a little bit with tech and I kind of like it, right? Cause it's part of my workflow now, my experience. And I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to merge tech and nursing together, become ultimately a CNIO. What, what are one or two things that you would suggest? So I would say not going to school first. That's a bad idea is going to school and getting a master's in something and not sure if you're even going to like it. Well, education is great. There's a, there's a real need to go out and really partner with your CI person that's on at your area and walk, walk around with them. See what they do. When I talk to people, they tell me all the time, everybody that I see now tells me they want to be, a, they want to be a CI, want to be a CI, want to be an informatics nurse. And I tell them, I'm like, so here's what you have to do. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought I got to sit behind the desk and like key stuff in. And I'm like, that is not what I'm looking for. So if you find that somewhere else, good on you. But that is not what we're going to look for here. The other thing is, is I'm very lucky at Moffitt. We actually have a trainee program. So we bring nurses in who have had a couple of years of experience at bedside. And we will train you over a two-year period to become an implementation. Now, it's it's self-fulfilling because we can bring you up into our ranks. If we don't have an open position, it opens it up to you going in somewhere else. You don't have to leave. We'll keep you in your trainee position, but we'll also open it up and we don't want to hold anyone back. So we, we're feeding we're feeding ourselves and we're feeding the world with informaticians. Yeah, that that's a great program, something that others might want to model. What about speaking now? You're obviously not just a great clinician leader, but also a leader. What about someone who's listening? Maybe they're in tech or some other area, maybe on the vendor side, but looking to come with provider side. But again, they're sort of middle management and they aspire to become a vice president or CNIO, CIO. What, what are one or two things that you would tell them to help them? Think about that really hard. Do you really <laughs> want that? You know, my, my team, I tell all the time, I'm like, you think that, it, you know, they're like, oh, you get paid the big bucks and it's super awesome. But your mind doesn't turn off, and that whole life work balance is a different beast the higher up you go it's 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 very difficult sometimes to turn that off, and you have to find ways of doing that, even myself, I have to find ways of disconnecting, and that's the reason I'm going on vacation very soon, and I can just <laughs> unplug. but I think that again, working with people in the industry, maybe reaching out and starting to talk about a mentorship and yeah. talk about it. I really like when people reach out and ask me, you know, well, what would you do? Here's what I want to do. How would you see me doing? That? I think that that is, it. but there's a key is mentorship is two way streak. It is not a one way. Do not come to yeah. me and ask me to mentor you. And then you not, you don't help with this situation. You've got to help me understand what it is that you want. And then I will help you figure out what I think it would work for you. And together we work that out and figure out what that plan looks like. I have a, I have a great educator that came to me and he wanted to know what else in healthcare he could do. And we talked about it and he actually got his certification in being a practice manager for a clinic. So there's a lot of opportunities out there and it just takes sitting down and talking it out. And I would guarantee you that anyone at your organization is willing in a leadership role is willing to sit down with you and have that as long as you're coming to the table playing also. Yeah. Love that. This has been so practical on many different levels. And I can tell, Mark, just from our previous experience, but also the answers you were giving and the heart that you're coming from, you're just a good person. Um, and so thank you for sharing as a leader, but but also just being a real person and authentic. So thank you for being part of Ed Talks. Uh, thank you for having me. It was wonderful.